Good morning. Welcome to worship at Eden United Church in Mississauga, Ontario on this Sunday, June the 6th, 2021. Today we begin ordinary time. Ordinary does not mean boring. In the church calendar, the word ordinary comes from the ordinal numbers by which the weeks are identified. This means that we are outside of the major Christian seasons, such as Advent or Lent. Ordinary time lasts from now until Advent begins. The lectionary readings now are based on no obvious theme. The emphasis during ordinary time is on the message of the kingdom of God. And so the focus tends to be one of social justice and concern for the poor. June is Pride Month. We in the United Church of Canada support and affirm all those who are part of the LGBTQ community. How shall we mark this special month? I am Reverend Jan McCormick, Supply Minister here at Eden United Church. Welcome to all members of the Eden Congregation and welcome to those from far and near who join us to worship this day. It is a pleasure and a privilege to worship together. We begin by acknowledging the territory upon which we gather. For many thousands of years, the original peoples sought to walk gently on this land. We are gathered on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Huron-Wendat, and the Mississaugas of the Credit. And we acknowledge these people's stewardship of the land throughout the ages. This land is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We are settlers on Turtle Island. In the spirit of truth and reconciliation, we commit to listen, to respect, and to support Indigenous peoples with whom we share this land. May we be mindful of broken covenants and our need to strive to make right with all our relations. We seek a new relationship with the first peoples of this land, one based in honor and deep respect. Whom do you trust in life? Rethinking relationships is never easy, yet the scripture passages today challenge us to do just that. A king may make a nation feel powerful in the midst of other nations, but God warned the Israelites that they would one day feel disempowered by the king they so adamantly demanded. A biological family may support and nurture, but sometimes that same family tries to pull us back into the nest rather than pushing us out into the world where God needs our particular ministries to fly. Whom do we trust in our lives? Let us quiet our hearts and minds for worship as we light the Christ candle. Walk in the light of God. Live in the light of God. Bask in the light of God. May the light of all lights transform your doubts into faith and your sorrows into joy.
Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Let us join our voices in the call to worship. Scattered seeds, emerging seedlings, we are all invited to blossom and grow with God. Youngest children, rugged shepherds, mighty rulers, we are all called to follow Christ. In the love of Christ created anew, we are called to create God's realm here in our world. Come, let us worship together. We will continue with our opening prayer. The opening prayer today is written to celebrate Pride Month. Let us pray. Imaginative and vibrant God, creator of all things, you made this planet and all its variety. Let us celebrate the diversity of the colors of the world. With red, orange, and yellow, we praise and give thanks for the warmth of your love shared between all your children, for the energy of the Holy Spirit that powers us forward in service to you, and for the joy of being accepted by you, just as we are. With green, blue, and violet, we worship and honor you for the softness of your caring and grace, for the stillness of prayer when we draw close to you, and for the peace of knowing that you hold us in your loving embrace. Imaginative and vibrant God, creator of each of us, you made us the way we are. Together we are a diverse blend of all your colors. Help us to love and celebrate each other as part of your beloved creation. Amen. Holy Spirit Live in me, fill my being, set me free. loved rainbows. Their beauty reminds me of the wonder of nature 
and the wide range of colors is simply magnificent. Rainbows also remind me of the constant and far-reaching power of God's love for all people. Today, we are celebrating the beginning of Pride Month and the importance of listening to and amplifying 2SLGBTQ plus voices, stories, and rights. As a way to spread love and positive messages in honor of Pride Month, I've painted some rocks and thought I would take you with me into my community to place them around to offer an encouraging word to anyone who passes by. The history of 2SLGBTQ plus in Canada goes back years. In 1969, Canada decriminalized homosexual acts, and in 1971, the first gay rights protest at Parliament Hill in Ottawa occurred. Then, in 1974, the Brunswick Four were arrested at the Brunswick Tavern in Toronto, and this brought more attention to the need for LGBTQ plus rights across Canada. It wasn't until 2003 where marriage between same-sex couples was legalized in Canada, making Canada the fourth country in the world to legalize same-sex marriage. While the 2S LGBTQ plus community has come a long way in terms of visibility and equality, there is still a lot of work to be done. We must all work together to ensure equity for all people in our community. Knowing the history of Pride Month is important, but it is also important to know how to be a good ally to our 2S LGBTQ plus family, friends, and neighbors. One thing we can do to be a good ally is to ensure we are using inclusive language in our everyday lives. Checking for a person's pronouns and respectfully using them, as well as using family language that is welcoming are two small ways we can work to become good allies. This Pride Month and every day, let's remember that all people deserve love and all people should be treated with dignity, equity, and respect. This month, I challenge you to learn more about the 2S LGBTQ plus community and to be a good ally for all people. Happy Pride Month, Eden, and God bless. Prayer for Illumination. Let us pray. Holy One, open our hearts to your loving spirit. Incline our ears to the truth of your scriptures. Speak to us now through the powers of your word, O God, that our faith may be strengthened, and our speech and our actions may flow from your word. Amen. Reading from the Hebrew Testament, 1 Samuel 8, 4-22. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old and your sons do not follow your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. 
But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, they also are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice. Only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, These will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. And he will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and courtiers. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of your flocks, and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, No, we are determined to have a king over us, so that we may also be like other nations, and that our king may govern us, and go out before us and fight our battles. When Samuel had heard the words of the people, he repeated them in the ears of the Lord. The Lord said to Samuel, Listen to their voices and set a king over them. Samuel then said to the people of Israel, Each of you return home. Gospel reading from Mark chapter 3, verses 20 to 35. And the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said he had Beelzebul by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And he calls them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a king is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man, then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brother came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the word of the Lord. May God bless it to our understanding. Thanks be to God. Sing praise to the Lord my God, lift up my voice in the sanctuary. I will sing praise to the Lord my God, I will say hallelujah and praise His holy name. I will sing praise to the Lord my God, 
Lift up my voice in the sanctuary. I will sing praise to the Lord my God. I will sing hallelujah and praise His holy name. Sing the glory of His name. Loving God, I pray that if there are words that are not in my text, that you will put them in my mouth. And if there are words that are not in my mouth, but people need to hear, that you will put them in their hearts. Amen. Samuel, son of Hannah and Elkanah, student of Eli, was a prophet of God. Do you remember his story? Hannah prayed so fervently in the temple for God to grant her a child that Eli thought that she was drunk. But Hannah assured Eli that she was completely sober, but that her concerns were both real and overwhelming. Hannah promised Eli that should her prayers for a child be answered, she would dedicate her child to serve God. Her prayers were answered, and Hannah did keep her promise. When Samuel was about two and a half or three years old, Hannah took him to the temple at Shiloh and left him with Eli to be trained in worship and in service. Can you imagine being desperate to have a child and then giving that child up? In the scripture passage today, we encounter Samuel at the opposite point in life. After devotedly serving God for many years, Samuel was coming to the end of his life. The Hebrew people had been used to having prophets among them who had served as communicators, conveying messages between God and the people. This had been a rather complicated system. Who would replace Samuel? His sons were not interested, nor were they appropriate for the role. The people had been observing the nations around them. Those nations had kings. A human ruler close at hand who would lead and guide the decision-making and would lead the nation's military forces into battle. That system looked really attractive. The leaders representing the people spoke to Samuel, and they told him that they wanted to be like their neighbors. They wanted a king. Samuel vehemently disagreed with that idea. Samuel prayed. God told Samuel to listen to the people, but also to warn them, to warn them of the downside of having a monarch. God interpreted the people's desire for a king as a rejection of God. Samuel did as God suggested. 
He listened to the people. He laid out for them everything that he felt was negative about having a human sovereign. Samuel warned that the people would become slaves. They would be conscripted into military service, or they would be farm laborers, or cooks and bakers, or manufacturers of equipment, and all the benefits of their hard work would go to the king. They would become slaves to the system. Samuel listened to the people, but the people did not listen to Samuel. They were determined to have a king. A disappointed Samuel reported all of this to God, and God's answer was the, the equivalent of, let it be so. Do we listen to people who disagree with us? There are good people who hold opinions different from our own. Surely it is healthy to have friends who bring a different perspective to the conversation, whether that perspective is political, theological, ethical, or social. God has given humanity free will. God does not intervene when we make unhealthy choices. But God does not abandon us. God was still present and at work in Samuel's situation. God still works to bring the best out of our wayward paths and unwise choices. Fear and insecurity led the Hebrew people to think that military might was better, a better choice than following God. We still think that way today, don't we? How many situations can you think of in which guns and tanks have been sent to solve a conflict when negotiations could have been the answer? Palestinians fired rockets into Israel, and Israel retaliated with airstrikes. Thousands flee from violence perpetrated by governments in Syria, Myanmar, and a number of African nations. There is always a price to pay when we trust in aggression. Just last week, Alexander Lukashenko, the autocratic leader of Belarus, ordered a plane which was flying across Belarusian airspace from Greece to Lithuania to land in Minsk, the capital of Belarus. The reason for this diversion was an alleged bomb threat, but it was actually a hijacking, an act of terrorism, a floating of the Freedom of the Skies Treaty. On the ground, a journalist who openly opposes the Lukashenko regime was arrested and incarcerated. There is always a price to pay when we trust human leaders. Who do we trust? Where do we look to find security? In the scripture reading from the Gospel according to John, we meet Jesus in the early stages of his ministry. News of Jesus' power to heal had spread rapidly. Jesus was surrounded by crowds wherever he went. He and his disciples were not even able to eat a meal in peace. The religious leaders felt threatened by Jesus' power and his popularity. They accused Jesus of being a servant of the devil. Satan does not necessarily mean a being with horns and a tail, but it does name a destructive power, a demonic power, that is actively at work against the compassionate and reconciling love of God. 
Jesus was defiant as he addressed his, these accusations. How can Satan cast out himself? Jesus asked. Anything divided against itself cannot stand, Jesus told his accusers. Not a house, not a kingdom, not even Satan. Jesus became even more defiant. If you want to plunder a strong man's home, he advised the scribes, you must first subdue that strong man by tying him up. Satan and Beelzebub represent the powerful forces that capture us and cause us to hurt ourselves, to hurt others, and to hurt God. Forces such as racism and patriarchy and materialism and militarism. We need to hear the good news of God to expose those forces that hold us captive. What are some of the strong men that influence your life? Was Jesus' behavior crazy? Bold actions of extravagant love, acceptance, and inclusion are the basis for Jesus' ministry, aren't they? The religious leaders did not want the people to think that Jesus was doing God's work. They thought that they had a monopoly on the God business. So they invented their own conspiracy theory. Jesus was working with the devil. He was exercising demons with the help of the devil's power. Jesus responded with a question. How can Satan force himself out? How much did Jesus' family understand about his ministry? Certainly, Mary and Joseph knew that he was a special person with a unique connection to God. But could they possibly have understood what that actually meant? As for Jesus' siblings, what did they know of the birth story and Jesus' ultimate destiny? Whatever they knew and understood, they knew that the defiance of the Jewish authorities could only mean trouble. In an effort to protect Jesus, they came to take him home. When Jesus was told that his mother and his siblings were at the gate and wanted to see him, his response was harsh. His words do not fit our perception of the meek and mild Jesus who loves and cares for everyone, does it? In Jewish society, family was the strongest authority after the religious leaders. Family was a patriarchal system. The father had authority over the entire household. Jesus was asking people to look at the world from a different perspective. Rather than following the dictates of the religious leaders and the leader of the family, it was time to consider the needs of the entire family of God. I find it interesting that Jesus' father is not mentioned in this passage. Jesus was told that his mother and his brothers and his sisters were at the gate and wished to see him. And Jesus responded in a similar fashion, mentioning only his mother and his siblings. Some scholars suggest that Joseph had died some years before Jesus began his ministry. Or do you think that Jesus was deliberately making a point about the patriarchal nature of a Jewish family? Or was Jesus trying to protect his family? Was Jesus trying to let his family know? that they would not be able to protect him. 
Or was Jesus merely broadening the scope of his family? His family was not limited to his blood relatives, but in fact included everyone who lived according to God's teaching. Jesus was not rejecting his own family. He was expanding his family. In these two passages, we have traveled full circle. The early Hebrews followed the guidance of God as spoken to them through Moses and the prophets, and they eventually rejected that in favor of following a human leader. In Jesus' time, the people were oppressed under the authority of human leaders, the Romans, the Jewish authorities, and a patriarchal family system. Jesus taught that people should reject all of that and return to following God. Return to living out God's plan of love, kindness, justice, and compassion. Jesus healed and taught so fervently that people suggested that he was crazy. But really, he was just inviting them, and us, to look at life from a different perspective. Amen. Dave Pratt has an important announcement for us. Hi everyone. I'm speaking to you today as a representative of Eden's Gift Giving Committee. Today, we want to acknowledge and celebrate a bequest that Eden received last month from the estate of the late Carol Hughes. Longtime Eden folks will remember Carol and John Hughes, but currently, you may be more familiar with their son Ken who continues to participate in Eden's folk group, even while living in Stony Creek. When the Hughes family moved to Meadowville, they lived on Oslo Crescent, where their backyard overlooked our church building at the corner of Derry and Copenhagen. Apparently, Carol often told the story of attending Eden for the first time. The minister met them on the outside steps, and they introduced themselves. The next week, he welcomed them by name. This made such an impression that they knew they had found their new church home. They enjoyed participating in our congregation's mission and marveled at the huge volunteer involvement. After retirement in 2003, John and Carol chased John's dream to live in cottage country. They moved to the Ports 32 development in Bob Cajun, where they became active at Trinity United. After John passed away in 2009, Carol remained in their home for several years. When she could no longer live independently, she first moved to a retirement home in Bob Cajun. When she was downsizing, she no longer had space for their Techniques keyboard, and she immediately thought of Eden. She reached out to us and donated it to our church. We are so blessed. Catherine Ambrose describes the instrument as having so many more features than our old one. Pretty much a Cadillac of keyboards. In September of 2019, Carol moved to a home in Stony Creek, where she could be closer to both her son 
and daughter's families. Carol passed away in October 2020, just a little more than a year after moving to Stony Creek. It was after that we learned that Carol also remembered Eden in her will. She specified a gift to Eden that she wished to be applied to the church's mortgage fund. The trustees will forward her gift to the United Church of Canada to help pay down Eden's communities in ministry mortgage. This is the mortgage that Eden established when we upgraded the building to LED lighting in order to save hydro costs and later added to the mortgage when we had to replace three furnaces. We are so grateful for Carol's faith, her participation in our community, and her generosity. Her gift will free us from some of our debt and help us to focus on our mission to gather, grow, and go into the world, reaching out in the mission work of this church. I would be remiss if I did not take this opportunity to also remind everyone that including Eden United in your will is an immensely powerful and meaningful way to contribute to the continuation and growth of the Eden Ministries that may be closest to your heart. If you are interested in learning more, please reach out to any member of Eden's Gift Giving Committee. Thanks. Let us pray. Creator God, source of all inspiration and beauty, we thank you for the generous gift of this bequest, now dedicated to the glory of your name. We thank you for your faithful servant, Carol Hughes, who generously gave her gift to Eden United Church. We are grateful for her presence within this congregation over many years. We are grateful for her example of faith, hope, love for her church, and for all members of Eden. May your Holy Spirit guide us as we go forward to serve this community. Our work has been further enabled by this wonderful gift. Amen. Although we are worshiping virtually, the costs of maintaining the church building and its programs does not change. Thank you to everyone who continues to make your donations regularly through PAR or by e-transfer or by delivering a check to the secure box outside the church office. If none of those options will work for you, perhaps you would like to mail a check to Eden United Church you will find the correct mailing address on the church website. With gratitude for all God's gifts and blessings, let us present our gifts this day. Let us pray the offering prayer together. Loving God, we give you thanks. Through these gifts we now bring, your faithful love has given us so much as we return a portion of those gifts, bless them to your purposes, we pray. Send these gifts out to do your work in the world, so that all may know you are beloved parent of all, and we are all part of your family. Amen. We continue in prayer with our prayers for ourselves and one another. In recent weeks, we have been exploring different versions of the Lord's Prayer. Today, we will pray a version written by Fred Keep. Let us pray the pastoral prayers together. Gracious God, we often forget that you are the one to trust in our lives. Instead, we turn our attention elsewhere. We want what others have. We become distracted by the activities around us. We forget to keep our focus on you. Forgive us, we pray. When we call your teachings crazy, bring us back 
to our senses. When we refuse to listen to your guidance, whisper truth that we might really hear. When we, would de when we demand all the wrong things, calm our minds and show us your wisdom. When we divide your house, restore your unity in our midst. When we confuse our relationships, help us to put love at the center of our ways. Restore us as your family, a family open to your wisdom, a family unified in your love. Holy One, give us the vision to perceive you without our human limitations. Help us to rethink our relationships with you, with your church, and with all peoples on this earth. Remind us once again that you are the Lord of our lives, the one who loves us completely, the one who offers abundant forgiveness, the one who never leaves our side. God of love, we pray for those whom we know and those whom we do not know, who are in need of your healing touch. We pray for those whose lives are burdened by loss or heartache, for those who are struggling with illness or pain, all those who are carrying hidden sorrows. We pray that you will grant strength and healing. We pray for all members of the Eden family of faith, our families, friends, neighbors, and co-workers. We pray in particular this day for everyone named on the list of requests for prayers that has been circulated. Holy One, we pray this day for everyone who is ill with the COVID-19 virus or its variants. We pray for medical professionals who are caring for those who are ill. We pray in particular for the people of India and the people of Manitoba, where the virus continues to spread rapidly. We are grateful that vaccinations are happening more quickly and over a wider range of ages. God of love, we pray for the families of 215 children whose remains were found recently in unmarked graves on the grounds of Kamloops Indian Residential School. We pray that these children can be identified and returned to their community for a traditional and respectful burial. Trusting that you have received all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, with mercy and grace, we pray in the name of the Christ within us and among us, who taught his followers to pray this way. Indwelling God, infused throughout all existence, we honor you with many names. Your realm is within the human heart. We accept life for all that it can be on earth as throughout all creation. May we continue to draw sustenance from this earth, and may we receive forgiveness equal to our own. May we ever more move from separation toward union, to live in grace with love in our hearts forever and ever. Amen. As we have gathered together as the family of God, so now we go forth to be family for the world. Go to love. Go to include. Go to embrace. Go to be generous friends and loving family. Go to share the presence of God's Spirit in the ever-widening family of God.
May the blessing of the steadfast love of God be yours. The light of Jesus the Christ be yours. The courage of the Holy Spirit be yours. Take these gifts out into the world and use them to bring about the kingdom of God. And everyone said together, Amen.